गुड मॉर्निंग गाइज टूडे टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज एट जीरो टू पॉइंट वन वन बीकॉन फ्रेम सो लेट्स गो टू द कंटेंट्स वट आर द थिंग्स टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू कवर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल लुक इन टू द इंट्रोडक्शन पार्ट देन हाउ डज द बीकॉन फ्रेम फॉर्मेट लुक्स लाइक आई विल शो यू ए बीकॉन फ्रेम कैप्चर देन वट आर द कंटेंट्स ऑफ ए बीकॉन लाइक टाइम स्टाप बीकॉन इंटरवल कैपेबिलिटी इंफॉर्मेशन एस एस आई डी एंड सपोर्टेड रेट्स लाइक ऑल थिंग्स टीम कंट्री इंफॉर्मेशन एलिमेंट्स रिलेटेड टू एट जीरो टू पॉइंट एलेवन एच ई आर पी इंफॉर्मेशन एक्सटेंडेड सपोर्टेड रेट्स एच टी एंड बी एच टी इंफॉर्मेशन ऑल द थिंग्स आई एम गोइंग टू कवर सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद इंट्रोडक्शन पार्ट so basically if you look at it beacon frames are basically used to communicate throughout the service area for the characteristics of the connection offered to the cell members so beacons are the frames transmitted by ap that is access point so it's the basic purpose of this beacon is to communicate which of the service area covered in that to offer the connection to the all the cell members so this information is used by the clients whoever is trying to connect to the network and as well as the clients who are already associated to the bss bss means base service station basic service set okay so basically this beacon frames are used by access points in an infrastructure network and the second one is stations in an ibss which is nothing but the ad hoc network beacons are sent periodically that periodically time interval is called tbt target beacon transmission time so one transmission unit in short we call it as uh, tu equals to 1024 microseconds so how we are going to calculate this beacon interval which is uh, represented as bi bi is nothing but 100 tu 100 transmission unit that is 100 multiplied by 1024 microseconds which equals to 102.4 milliseconds so always beacon interval equals to 102.4 milliseconds so here this is a beacon frame format so how does it looks like you can see here beacon format uh, here you can see this is the mac header then uh, here some frame body is there everything is there so further we we are going to discuss how does it looks like everything anyway you guys should know by this time what is frame control what is du duration this is destination address source address bss id everything you i hope uh, you know these things very well and these are the size of uh, each and every field mentioned in the bytes here you can see so some of things are mentioned over here as uh, mandatory and uh, optional in the next slides we are going to discuss all these things so this is the beacon frame format and uh, of a beacon frame this is one of the capture which i thought uh, sharing to you now here it looks like this whatever we saw in the earlier slide in the frame format here you can see what kind of which version is this what is the type uh, this is this is a management frame which is mentioned over here and the sub type is nothing but uh, called its beacon okay and uh, uh duration destination 
source, BSSID, sequence number, fragment number, all the things are mentioned over here. Coming to the next part, this is the beacon. So here, this is the overall look of a beacon. Uh, what are the things I told you in the content? So here we are going to discuss in detail. Uh, basically, what is, the be what is a beacon time stamp? What do you mean by beacon interval? Which we discussed uh, all in all your slide. That is one zero two, uh, one zero. See here we saw it. Right? Uh, this is one zero two point four, one zero two point four milliseconds. So that's what uh, it's mentioned here. Uh, here uh, you can see one zero two time units, uh, and basically SSID rates, team, country, HD capability. Okay, uh, let's go further and uh, we'll discuss in detail all these things. If you look at the beacon frame capture, you can look in the frame body section that uh, there are a few mandatory fields and few optional fields. So mandatory fields in a beacon frame are the following. The first one is timestamp, which size is 8 byte. Second one is beacon interval. Third one is capability info. Fourth one is SSID. And the fifth one is supported rates. So these five fields, starting from timestamp to supported rates, these are the mandatory fields. If the size of the IE, this is nothing but i information element ie so if the size of the ie is specified within the bracket those elements are of fixed length on the other side if the size is not mentioned that is of variable size okay so here you can look in the audio slide now uh, the beacon stop, beacon interval, capability info, SSID, and rates. These five fields are mandatory fields, whereas uh, all these are optional fields. Okay. Coming to the next slide, what is timestamp and uh, beacon interval? So timestamp is having eight byte of length. So basically, what is this? This value represents the time on the access point. This is a very simple concept. This value represents the time on the access point. So, means, which is the number of microseconds the AP has been active. When this time sum reaches its maximum value, that is 2 to the power 64 microseconds, it will again reset to zero. Basically, this field, which is timestamp, contains in my beacon frame and the probe response frame. Beacon interval, which is of again two byte. Beacon interval field, it is represented as the number of time units and uh, between and which comes in picture in between TBT that is uh, target beacon time TBT so this beacon interval already we discussed in our uh, earlier slide this default value is 100 time unit that is 102.4 milliseconds so here you can see the informations, these are called capability info. Capability info here, the size of this field is of uh, two byte. This field basically contains the number of subfields. They are the subfields, it's clearly showed here, uh, which indicate requested or advertised optional capabilities. This is uh, advertised by the AP 
uh, which indicates what are the requested and advertised option capabilities. This is the SSID field. Here the SSID element ID is 0, whose length is 7. See, there are 7 characters. So that's the reason it's 7. So this field present in all beacons, probe request, probe response, association request, and reassociation request as well. Its element ID is zero, and uh, the maximum length of SSID can be of 32 characters. Coming to the next slide, supported rates, this field is present in all the beacons, which is a mandatory field, probe request, probe response, association request, association response, reassoc request and reassoc response as well. This field is of basically eight octet field, where each octet describes a single support address. So here the last, the, this field is basically the 8 uh, bit rate. So the last bit, which is the seventh one of each octet indicate whether the data rate is basic rate or the mandatory rate. So, or uh, the supported rate. So in the other words, basic rate is nothing but the mandatory rate and the other one is supported rate. If the seventh bit value is one, it is in, it indicates a basic rate. Okay. Whereas if the value is zero, it indicates a supported rate. One and zero. The next seven bits, there are total eight. The last one, which is the seventh one, the seventh bit, it's saying is it a mandatory rate? Yes, supported rate. Whereas the remaining seven bits, zero to six, which specifies the data rate value in units of 500 kbps. Let's calculate one thing. This, this is an example I'm trying to show you here. Let's say it's showing six mbps. How does it calculate? 12 multiplied by 500 kbps. Units. Basic rate value represents represent is this one so basically this is the seventh bit zero one two three four five six seven seventh bit is one it means this is a mandatory supported mandatory rate and out of this seven fields if you calculate you come to 12 multiplied 600 500 kbps okay. seventh bit equal to one means to indicate the basic rate and 0 to 6 is 0 this one value 12 to indicate 6 mbps see 1 2 4 8 1 2 4 8 okay so this is value 12 to indicate 6 mbps coming to supported rates See, the supported rate field looks like this. Here, the element ID is 1. So, this is the expansion of a supported rate field of a beacon. So, here, the element ID is there. What is the length? What are the supported rates? Everything is mentioned over here. So, at least one mandatory rate must be set by AP and any station, whoever is going to join with the cell, must support all the basic rates. So in this example, what uh, I'm trying to show you is uh, the default setting is 802.a radio, whereas uh, 6 Mbps, 12 Mbps, 24 Mbps, these rates are set as the basic rates to ensure whoever is joining station understand all modulation techniques. So they are the modulation techniques for this.
MBPS के 69 MBPS, QPS के 12, 18 MBPS, form 24 MBPS. So all the basic rates here you can see 6 Mbps, 9 Mbps, 12 Mbps and so wherever it's marked as basic rate here you can see 6, 12 and coming to this 24. Apart from that all, no, all are supported. Here some of the other parameters we are going to link uh, F, FH parameter set. This parameter set is basically used by the legacy frequency offing stations. DS parameter which is again of uh, 2 byte. This is present with the uh, beacon frames which are generated by stations again cf parameter it is of again 8 byte this is used with the pcf which is uh, basically unused in the dual network ibss parameter which is again a 4 byte this present only with beacon frames generated by stations in ibss so that is what called uh, ad hoc network so team this is nothing but traffic indication map team basically presents only within b conference generated by aps this team elements contains information useful for stations which is in low power mode uh, whenever the ap going to use the d team that is uh, delivery traffic indication map uh, which is to inform the cell whether it has the broadcast or uh, multicast frames which is buffered for them so d team is basically not present in all the beacons but all the teams are present okay, don't get confused so Basically, team has this following fields. Uh, first one is element ID, which is of one byte length. Uh, so, which is of one byte, and uh, the length is of four byte. Then the D team count. D team count is of one byte. So, what is the main purpose of this D team count? How many beacon frames? appears before next dt meaning let's say i will give an example and answer let's discuss first so how many d team how many beacon frames because this d team is not present in all the beacons only some of the beacons this d team is present so this d team count field will show how many beacon frames appear before the next peak? Okay. Value 0 indicates current team is a D team. D team period. This is again of size 1 bit. This is the number of beacon intervals between successive D teams. So, in between two D team, how many beacons are there? It's going to so you this is a bitmap control value again it's of size one byte this if the first bit equals to one means buffer multicast or broadcast data at ap if the first bit is set to one it shows that it it's conveys that the buffer data is of type multicast or broadcast if it is zero, no multicast data or broadcast data at AP. Very simple. Then PVV, partial virtual bitmap. So which is again of size 1 to 251, which represent the stations whoever in and they are in low power mode for which AP has traffic as buffered. So this is the basic purpose of this PVV bit. So this represents basically stations 
in low power for which AP has traffic buffer. See, this stem bit looks like this. This is the element ID which is 5. Length is 4. DTIM count is 0. DTIM 1. So this bitmap control we shows 0. 0 means there is no broadcast YAML data and the parcel bit, virtual bitmap value. So let's say uh, dtim count is 0 means the current tim bit is a dtim bit. Current tim beacon is a dtim beacon. Okay. Dtim period is 1 means after 1 uh, beacon again the next beacon has to be dtim beacon. That's what it's trying to show you. This is the country specific values. Here it's saying. So each country has some regulatory bodies that limit the channels or power levels allowed in their regulatory domain. So uh, it basically defines the country of operation along with the allowed channels and uh, what is the maximum transmit power supported there. This element ID is 7 and here for all it's that country code is basically Australia here and what are the things is support so what is the maximum transmission power what is the number of channels everything is clearly showing in this element ID and uh, basically this is a mandatory field coming to what are the elements related to 11H okay here it's showing the first one is power constraint. This is again of uh, 3 byte and uh, uh, this field is basically related to 11H. If you look at the channels, this is for uh, UNIA2 and they are extended. So what are the spectrums you used for other purposes like uh, civilian airport and radar or weather radar. So basically, if you look at these channels, these are the DFS channels, dynamic frequency service. So you know to avoid the interference with those systems, AP should be operating in a maximum power specified by these constant fields. So this element is again related to H2.11H we are going to discuss where the channel switch may happen. This is again of 6 byte and uh, if a radar detected something wrong is going or wrong is going to happen, what it will do, it will intimate all the stations must have the affected channel. So the AP can certain announcements to the cell saying that you can use the next channel. Okay. Again, uh, and the element is called quiet, which is of again 8 byte. This is also related to this 11H. So here what will happen, AP can request a quiet time during which no stations should transmit in order to test the channel for the presence of radars. This is the purpose. This is IBSS again DFS. This is used with the IBSS. Couple of more things are there in 11H. Uh, TPC report. Uh, so this TPC report mainly contain the transmit power and the link margin information usually sent when it's going to get a TPC request element. So in response, it's going to send the TPC report. ERP information and extent supported rates. This ERP element basically presents in the 2.4 gigahertz network which supporting 802.11 
it presents in uh, all the beacons and uh, probe response. We will see in which conditions the non ERP present bit is set to 1. Let's see one by one. Whenever a non ERP station, which is a legacy one, either 11B, 11 or 11B associated to the cell, that time this bit is going to set to 1. Second condition, if a neighbor, if a neighboring cell is detected, allowing only non ERP data rates. Third is, apart from that, if any kind of other management frames, uh, which is accept probe request, is received from neighboring cells and uh, which supports only non ERP data. In all these three conditions, this non ERP present bit is set to 1. And there are the extended supported rates. Extended supported rates basically specifies the element, specifies the supported rates not carried in the supported rates element. It is only required when there are more than 8 supported rates. Then only this extended supported rates will come into picture. Next is uh, this RSN information element when you are going to enable the security that is called in sort RSN, robust secure network. So here you can see this RSN information element is going to uh, show you the authentication cipher, what is the encryption cipher, everything it's going to show you here you can see cipher list what is the uh, authentication management should authentication management count everything is going to so these are the rsn capabilities so here i took an example of uh, uh, a beacon which shows uh, support for 802.1x and uh, 802.11r FT as authentication source. So here I am going to show you this is 802.1x authentication. Here you can see. And this is the FT authentication negotiator. Okay. So if you look at it, what is 11 uh, 802.1x authentication? What is FT authentication? They are uh, some of the different topics uh, uh, we will discuss further. Maybe the upcoming slides okay this is again the aes and there are different types of securities right so this is kind of this is nothing but the aes pairwise cipher for unicast traffic and the group cipher is broadcast or multicast here you can see all the things are mentioned over here this is the ccmp everything okay a BSS load. What is BSS load? Uh, again, this element is used when the cost is supported. Quality of service. Cost means quality of support. And often it's represented as QBSS load. So, this element ID is going to provide information regarding the cell load uh, from the AP perspective. So it has the following, uh, these are the subfields you can say, you can see here uh, how many stations are connected, how many stations are uh, connected, it will show you here, then over the channel utilization, okay, uh, whereas uh, when the AP sensed medium was busy, it will show how many, how much percent is busy, then the available admission capacity show you all the details these are the edc parameter set so again this will come into picture when the cost is supported what is cost we'll discuss in the normal in the thing and uh, in the most of the things uh, this cost enable network uh, uh, source via wm yeah wme vendor specific elements you can see in the big one 
these are the cost capabilities so basically this cost capability is used as a replacement to the edca parameter element with the edca parameter is not present coming to mobility domain it's not uh, visible so clearly because i zoomed in so here just you can manage here you can see the mobility domain uh where i took the capture of uh, 802.11 r which is nothing but the roaming cases fast transition we can say so it will use the mobility domain ie to indicate it here you can see the fast bss transition over the distribution system is showing okay so fast bss transition over the bs is enabled which is set to one again ht capability so this is this is basically for uh, 802.11 n here you can see the element id is 45 and uh, for the capability information here in detail it's showing over here see here both 20 megahertz and uh, 40 megahertz operation is supported that bit is set to one okay uh, if you go in detail it will show you everything uh, this is again for a 02.11 n only st operation uh, element everything it's doing see this is the secondary channel first uh, reserved st operation element what is the ht protection field everything coming to vst vst means 11 ac this is related to 11 ac here you can see the vst capability info so here it's showing which bandwidth it's going to support it's it's going to support 160 or 80 plus 80 this is uh, showing zero it's only supporting short short gig um, short guard interval of 80 megahertz this bit is turned to one okay this looks like this and uh, in the vst operation element here you can see the same thing i'm continuing here it's set to 80 megahertz this channel width is 80 megahertz this is the vst operation element This is the waste transmit power envelope. Again, this is used with the 11 AC. So in the 11 AC, we have the information, we have the operation element, and all the things it's going to show you in detail for 20 megahertz. What is this power for 40 megahertz, for 80 megahertz, all the things. I hope uh, it's a little bit useful for you and uh, let's go through it. You guys have any comment or questions you're always welcome thank you guys thank you so much thank you so much for watching this video bye